Hi, EMC. I am Patricia Florisi, a proud EMCer just like you. In a tribute to Steve Paul Jobs, it is insanely great to be here today, and I hope this video inspires you to think differently. With EMC's leading position in a journey to the cloud and our outstanding product portfolio, you may be thinking, why do we need to focus on big data? And why now? The answers actually lie on the opportunities ahead of us. 2012 is going to be the year of big thinking, of big discoveries and big data. And we are EMC's front line. Let us work together to accelerate these discoveries and let us work together to unlock big data's potential. We see a lot of PowerPoint in trainings and we hear a lot of voices telling us what is important and what we should focus on. But when we are at our best, we are usually storytellers. So this time around, we really wanted to do something fun, compelling and engaging, and maybe give us something we can use when telling these stories to our customers. I hope you like it. It's called, How Big is Big Data? Big data is everywhere, and more and more applications are created every day to extract value from it, enriching both our personal and professional lives. In many ways, big data is born out of the sheer pace at which data is generated. In fact, some analysts expect that by the end of the decade, the amount of data generated will be 50 times the amount of data today. At one hand, this deluge has been greatly accelerated by things like the growth of scientific data. Consider, for example, the atomic physics experiments at CERN that can generate 40 terabytes of data every second. On the other hand, this diluge has been led by some very positive social and economical changes in our society. Consider, for example, the rapid adoption of GPS-enabled, media-rich mobile devices and of social networks that has digitally linked billions of people worldwide. Together, they have enabled a new way of living through spontaneous, instantaneous, and almost constant exchange of data among individuals. These and many more emerging new ways of doing things, of living really, are today generating data that has been loosely classified as big data. One of the not so secret secrets about big data is that it is fueled by the very properties of the cloud. In fact, it is the attributes of the cloud, such as economies of scale, affordability to the masses, agility, and extensibility that enable us to create big data and to tackle its challenges. And in turn, the very big data demands drive future designs, enhancements, and expansions of the cloud, all in a never-ending cycle driving both forward. Simply put, Big data challenges expose all of us to the details and limitations of the underlying information infrastructure and pushes users to seek thought leaders and to force them to experiment and move to the next generation of breakthroughs. When that happens, people can solve problems they previously couldn't. They can take on challenges that they previously wouldn't. EMC today finds itself positioned at the intersection of cloud and this avalanche of big data. And because of our unique position in the field, we get asked questions all the time like, how big really is big data? This is actually a very intriguing question whose answer seems to lack consensus at the moment, but whose ambiguity has not stopped the use of the term. A common misconception, however, is that big data refers solely to the size of the data. If it is data and it is big, then, well, it must be big data. While size is certainly an element of the equation, there are other aspects or properties of big data not necessarily associated with size. For example, consider the speed at which big data is generated and the number and variety of sources simultaneously generating data. Let's take a look at each and see what really classifies different data as big data. I think we would all agree that a 40 megabyte PowerPoint presentation, a terabyte healthcare image, or a petabyte move are all big. But the question at hand is, 
Are they big data? I could argue that they are not big data simply because of their size. What is big today, hey, may not be so big tomorrow. But I would argue that they are big data because each pushes to the limits the common technology available to utilize them. A 40 megabyte PowerPoint presentation is big data when you cannot share it via email with a colleague or customer. A terabyte healthcare image is big data when you cannot simply and accurately display it in a remote screen in real time for a doctor to use in a consultation with a patient. A petabyte movie is big data when you cannot render edits within the time constraints of the business. So that was a good start. We demystified the number one misconception, which is that big data is just about size. As we see, big data is really about any attribute, size being one of them, when it challenges the constraints of a system's capability or business need. But what about the other attributes like the speed at which data is generated, or the number and variety of sources that create it that can fit our definition? This is where the big data classification can be applied to data that is not, by itself, big at all. Some of these can get their big data classification based on volume as they are being created by aggregating many fragments of small data that are somehow related and the large set of these fragments then define a big data. These volumes can be seen, for example, in the context of the smart meters that are being deployed in every home worldwide that send to the electric companies the energy generated and consumed in a household every 10 to 15 minutes. Now you can multiply that by the number of homes in a city or even in a small town, and big data refers to the sheer volume of data to be analyzed within a given time frame or within a geographical boundary. Big volumes of data can also be found in logs, where a huge volume of entries for a system, when grouped together, create an instance of big data. Or it can be found in a transactional world where many transactions together generate databases containing big data. Another interesting aspect of big data is that not all big data are the same from a structure perspective. Some big data have its format well defined, like transactions in a database, where each entry can be divided into fields, each with a well defined and understood data type. Some big data may just be a collection of blog entries that contain text, tables, images, voice, and video, all kept in the same data storage. Which leads us to the final aspect of big data, generation diversity and interconnectedness. Big data generation ranges from automated generation of information by applications, such as images of weather predictions, to manual entries, such as people videotaping portions of their everyday lives or typing entries into Twitter. Big data also gets updated at an amazing rate in a very iterative and incremental manner. Changes to the data are generated constantly, and the data gets more accurate, more precise as time passes, and more data about the data is created, calculated, or inferred. Despite of the size, speed or source of the data, or portions of the data, big data drives the need to make sense out of the chaos. Big data drives the need to find meaning on the data that is constantly changing, and to find relationships between the data created. Understanding this interconnectedness and being able to harvest the information hidden in big data unlocks big data's value, which can only be gained by being able to tackle our own big data challenges. Collecting, analyzing, and understanding big data is becoming a differentiated strategy today, but it will become a fact of life tomorrow. Running analysis at the finest granularities, while still having enough data for the results to be meaningful and accurate, leads to more precise action and, in turn, more profits and savings for the company and customers. So when it comes to big data, the question actually is not, why should I care about big data? But how can I get closer to big data? 
And how can I start taking advantage of it now? EMC technologies empower us to get started on the road to unlocking all the value that resides in our own big data. We hope you enjoyed this approach and found this story and animation helpful as we continue to have these exciting discussions with our customers. In reality, big data creates a big opportunity for us as information infrastructure technologies. Unfortunately, for us, there is always a price. The intersection of cloud and big data is forcing us to talk more and more in the language of applications and more and more in the context of the business. This can be overwhelming as we are forced more and more outside of our storage comfort zone. It seems that we now need to know about every application in every expanding universe and understand them all to have a meaningful conversation with the enterprise outside of IT. The good news is that in the case of big data, we actually have a topic of conversation that is application independent to a certain degree and at the same time very relevant to application developers and to business units. We need to get familiar with big data and big data analytics and practice it often as a way of life within the context of our daily activities. We will then be able to talk about our own experiences and draw parallels with our disciplines and relate to our customers. So hey, think big, think data, think big data.